What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, aka the Crypto Hitman. And today I have with me Lintern and Cobra from Real Floki Inu, the people's cryptocurrency and utility token of the growing Floki ecosystem. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing good. We're doing good. How are you doing, Nick? Doing great. I'm actually really excited for this. Uh, a lot of my community members have been long term supporters and holders and, and users of uh, Floki Token and the Floki ecosystem. I'm so excited to learn more from you guys and excited to have you guys on this call. So much so that I did want to liven up this video a little bit and do a 1 million Floki Token giveaway. Simply like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your wallet address in the comment section below. Additionally, I'll be doing a 2 million Floki Token giveaway for all the members over at patreon.com slash learn crypto. If you like what you see over there and you sign up, you'll be automatically entered into that 2 million token giveaway and you'll receive daily updates on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and news for both crypto and stocks. So now that we got that out of the way, guys, if you one of you guys wanted to start off, uh, tell me a little bit about Floki. You know, Floki started off as a meme coin, kind of a, a cousin or a little brother to Doge, but has really expanded tremendously over the last few years. Do you want to kind of walk us through that journey? Wow. There would be lots to talk about there. I'm sure maybe there might be things that I would miss out. So I'm so that that's why we've got we've got Cobra here um, to also to, to support uh, in case uh, there are things that I that I've that I've missed out. Well, it's a very long journey. It's almost two years now. Interestingly, um, last in 2021, uh, Elon tweeted that his Shiba Inu will be named Floki, and as you know, uh, prior to that time, he had he had. You know, there were there were series of tweets around uh, meme coins proud pr pr to that time. There was a time where he said, you know, you know, he was looking for a Shiba Inu, right? Which was he was signaling that he was gonna was he was looking for a dog, he was looking to buy a dog. And eventually, when he then uh, decided to actually buy the dog, he then tweeted uh, in July 2021 that he's he's uh, Cobra. I believe that was July or June. I, I, I'm I'm not exactly. I can't exactly remember it. Yeah, June 25th, 2021. Thank you, Cobra. John, so he tweeted that his Shiba Inu you know, will be named Floki. And as you would imagine that night, uh, everybody, a lot of uh, devs randomly created all sort, of, all sort of Floki. And there were several coins created named Floki. I don't want to mention or dignify any one of them uh, by, by, by mentioning them right, right on, this, uh, on this session today. Uh, this particular Floki, the Floki Inu you know, at that time, was one of the ones that was created by these by one of the devs that night. So that old Floki is gone, and and, and I do recognize and I do want to want to emphasize that it's a different team uh, from that version one that uh, we have that we then eventually launched with for version two. So V two launched uh, with a lot of promises. We had several we had people Saber B, Mister B, and 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 quite a number of uh, of writers at that time came together. To, to save the project with one mission, not just not just not just relaunch another another meme coin and let it be that way, but instead relaunch the, the, the meme coin the way it is, right on that strength of uh, of the meme culture to eventually create something that's got utility. Between then and now, we've gone on to do amazing things, which we are going to talk about on this. So right now, if you ask me for the for the easy way to, the simple way to describe Floki, I would say meme utility, because uh, yes, we are strong on meme, on, on, on the meme culture, but we are also strong um, on, on utility. Just a quick introduction of myself. So I've been here for about a year and a half now. And um... Yeah, Linder and covered just about all of it. I mean, Floki's got an entire ecosystem, which includes Ahala and Flokify and our NFT projects and, and of course our charity work. So we're just really, really excited. It's been an exciting couple of years. So um, yeah, my, my talk next, about my, any specifics you want. Yeah, my next question was gonna be the, the what are the main components of the Floki ecosystem? And you just kind of touched base on those. So, you know within those components of the ecosystem, within those products and kind of the different lines and arms of, of Floki, what are the main current utilities for the Floki token itself in each individual product? Like why do people, why should they in, invest, hold, speculate, or use Floki uh, within within each of those products? Could you kind of explain uh, how it harnesses value for each? Sure, sure. sure. Uh, of course, nothing I say is, is financial advice, so it's not an invitation to invest, but there are a lot of reasons to hold uh, the Floki token, and it's important to fully understand our ecosystem, and it's pretty involved. So 
uh, bear with me and stop me at any time if you have more questions. But our flagship utility is a 3D NFT metaverse. It's called Valhalla. It is the most innovative game that's ever been built in crypto. It's actually the biggest project ever in crypto as far as smart contracts go. Currently, there are 67 smart contracts that drive Valhalla. You can play it today for free. All you need to do is go to Valhalla.game. Why would a game need 67 smart contracts? It is the most innovative game in crypto because it is the first game ever that allows you to own all of your assets. So your character is yours. It's an NFT on the blockchain. The critters that you capture are yours. It's an NFT on the blockchain. Your clan of 30 players that you play with together is a blockchain-based uh, blockchain clan. Um, the game fully integrates the blockchain in ways that are innovative and revolutionary, and it's going to change the way that people look at, at Web3 gaming in the sense that... Um, it fits in with the vision that Vitalik Buterin had. A lot of people don't realize when Ethereum was founded, that was because Vitalik played World of Warcraft. They nerfed his character. He got mad. He started Ethereum. So this is really built in his vision uh, where the players can uh, trade items with one another directly from their Web3 wallets. They can uh, earn Floki tokens through battling and there's no barrier to entry. You won't need a fancy NFT to play the game. You don't need a thousand bucks worth of Floki. We're thinking some small amount, maybe $20 or less in order to make your character playable. And then the fun begins and everybody will have an equal chance to earn. So, so that's for Hala in a nutshell. That's really, that's really exciting. You know, I used to play World of Warcraft as well. So that's 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 a pretty funny story with my like butering. Uh so potentially Floki utility within Valhalla is that you need a small amount to make your account playable, maybe 20 bucks. So that's cool if you got huge user growth. Is Floki going to be utilized as a payment currency or in-game gold or anything else within Valhalla? Or is it going to have any more utility? Absolutely. So uh most people are probably thinking, yeah, right, another web three game, right? And Every Web3 game, if you can find one that has a balanced economy, please show me, but I don't think we've seen one yet. Uh, we aim to, to, to address that issue. All of the in-game purchases will be made with Floki tokens. So if you want to buy potions, you want to buy um, amulets, which are like the Pokeballs. Those are what's used to catch our critters, which are called Vera. Uh, those purchases will all be made with Floki tokens. Those go directly into the treasury for other players to earn. So we have a very large treasury uh, it's public out there and we have a lot of Floki tokens. We are going to kickstart the economy of Valhalla with a large sum of Floki tokens for players to earn through the battle function. But really it's important to note that um, it's not viable to, to base the economy of, an, of a game on a volatile asset, on a volatile token, because we all know that if it does 100X, then everybody's looking to, to get out, to extract what they can from the game um, instead of, you know, live in that game's economy, e ecosystem. So uh, the NFTs, you know, your characters, your critters, all of that stuff are also um, a way to earn and probably more so the, the superstar of Valhalla in that um, it has an ELO system. You can battle your friends head to head. If you have the best character in Valhalla, um, it is yours. It's an NFT. There's not another one like it. And if somebody wants to buy that from you, they can. Uh, it involves esports. It involves uh, the PvP function. So you can imagine as gamers, um, if you want to kick your buddy's butt and you need to spend uh, 50 bucks to get a Vera character that does that, you're probably going to do it um, if you're anything like me. <laughs> yeah, that's really exciting because like you said, I really... I, I've played GameFi projects. I've been seed investors in GameFi. GameFi, as far as an economic situation with it with a token hasn't been figured out yet so it's exciting to hear that you guys think you potentially have figured it out and the fact that it's actually true web 3 where every in-game asset is an nft that you own and you can sell kind of like selling it in world of warcraft that was in the store for gold now maybe you can sell that for floki tokens uh all via smart contracts which is really exciting yeah think, you can go ahead. go ahead go ahead no i was gonna say it's all done by smart contract you can you know our our tournaments um our 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 quests, all of that stuff, everything can be driven by a smart contract. Um, the way that, you know, it's a clan-based game. Like I said, it's an open world. It's not just a battle arena. You'll be able to raid, you'll be able to farm. Uh, so the people that want to raid will need resources. The farmers will be able to farm NFT resources. They'll sell those to the people that want to go raid. Uh, everybody plays off everybody, kind of like uh, Clash of Clans, 3D, 
on steroids on the blockchain. That's awesome. And I think the most exciting product that you guys announced recently and that falls within the ecosystem that we should talk on next is uh, the Flokify Locker. So if you can explain what the Flokify Locker is and what the utility for Floki is within, within that ecosystem. And I know you guys have brought some people on in projects on board recently. I don't, I'm not sure what the TVL is currently, uh, but if you have that and then kind of your hopes for projected TVL leading into this next bull market, that'd be awesome. Yeah, sure. I can cover that. And then uh, we've got more than just the game and the locker and the ecosystem. And maybe uh, Lintern can cover some of that. So I want to talk about Flokify Locker. You asked for the TVL and I am a numbers person. So let me just pull up Flokify.com. Anybody can go there. It's F-L-O-K-I, uh, F-I as in Flokifinance.com. And if you go there right now, you'll see that the TVL is $32,880,748. Um, that's down a little bit because the markets are down a little bit. Obviously, TVL fluctuates with the price of the tokens that are locked there. The all-time high TVL was just about 40 million, 38 and change. Um, and this is the first full quarter that it's in, in operation. So TVL, that's great, right? People love to kick that term around in this space, but what does it really mean? Flokify Locker is the most innovative digital asset and liquidity locker that's ever been built. It allows people, uh, the, the main function is for other projects to lock their liquidity with the Flokify Locker. There's a couple competitors out there. You guys know if you've been into the token launch game, uh, the TG, um, pardon my language, but the shitcoin lottery where everybody comes in and they want to look and see, you know, is the liquidity locked? Is the liquidity locked? Are we going mm -hmm. to be rug pulled? That's what this locker does. It's integrated with Dex Tools. So if you go to any token on Dex Tools and you see the little lock next to that, it's either green if there's a liquidity lock or it's gray if there's no liquidity lock. You can click on that and it shows you, um, you'll see Unicrypt Finance. You'll now see Floki locks there. So um, we aim to make this the biggest, the largest, the, the most used um, locker in the space. And we plan to do that by utilizing Floki's massive global marketing, as well as our incredible community, which is almost half a million strong. Um, you guys have seen us out there rating on Twitter. We can make a lot of noise for a project around their lock event. So if ABC token decides to lock their liquidity for a hundred billion years, which by the way, you can do in Flokify Locker, then um, it becomes a very public event, right? And that's uh, great for investors to feel safe that they won't be rug pulled if that liquidity is locked up. You can also lock NFTs, you can lock batches of NFTs, you can lock um, you can lock ERC-1155 tokens, nobody in the world, there's no other locker that offers that. So it's really, really cool. But most importantly, what's all that TVL mean? We are in a half a percent. That's our fee, it's a flat fee, it's, uh, less, it's less costly than most competitors. And when somebody locks their liquidity with us, Half a percent of that goes into the Floki treasury, and we get to use that money to build cool stuff like Valhalla, like Flokify, and to do the incredible marketing that you guys are used to seeing. Did I do a good job with that? You did a great job. And does a does a portion of the Floki tokens that, that are earned are bought back with the Flokify revenue? Is any of that burnt, or is it just used to market by Floki, or are they, is the projects actually paying in Floki themselves? Yeah, you did an excellent uh, segue for us there. So yes, 75% um, of the fee income goes directly to the Floki treasury. The other 25% is an automatic buyback and burn of Floki tokens. So uh, it's important that it's a buyback. The, the protocol buys them right off of mm -hmm. PancakeSwap or Uniswap, and it burns those tokens. I think a lot of people use burn as a gimmick in this space. This is a transaction. It's not a human. It's our protocol, our smart contract that is creating buy pressure by by buying the tokens back and then burning them sending them to a dead address so um it's a slow burn and it will take time but over the years as we earn more and more fee income there will be less and less floki out there on the market for people to buy that's awesome that's what i like to hear yeah some people use the burn function as you know a gimmick like you said but the fact that it is causing liquidity it is causing volume it is causing an actual buy on the open market and then those tokens are burning uh, from total circulating supply and total max supply to make Floki deflationary. And that's just one component of your ecosystem. That's why I'm so excited about Floki and the ecosystem you guys have created because there's like four products. So I don't know if Lintern, if you want to talk about the third product in the ecosystem and how the Floki token is, is involved now after we've already talked about Bahala and uh, Flokify. 
Yeah, absolutely. I can talk about the other, comp uh, the other components of the of the ecosystem. I think I touched on one one on one briefly, uh, and that's um, the the charity angle. And, and trust me, we are we're really big on that. Uh, but here at Floki, we actually care about changing people's life, and and that's what we do with our, with, our, with the charity aspect of this of this project. So I mentioned earlier that we have built schools four schools across four countries. Uh, we have one school in Nigeria, uh, which if you go on floki.com, you would see if you scroll down to the charity as aspect of the of the, the charity section of the website on the right on the home page, you will see a link to a documentary that talks about that school in Nigeria. Um, it, it, I mean, and I recommend that your, that your viewers go there to, 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 to watch for themselves. So that's one of the uh, uh, one of the one of our charitable uh, projects, but let me let me take you back to the beginning. We actually started at the beginning. If you, I don't know if you remember, by making a big donation to the uh, Million Guardians Movement, right? They have this big green project that, that they have, you know, in that organization. And by the way, that, that that's the organization started by Elon Musk's brother. Uh, part of their goal is to is to end global hunger, which is also one of the major issues we've, we've got uh, ac across the world right now, right? So. Um, we donated $1.4 million, and that was when we did that was when we launched our, our flow guitars, right? And those, so we launched our flow guitars, which will play a significant role in Valhalla. Cobra can, can maybe talk about that a little bit later. Also, just recently, we, we've just raised uh, some money, about 50 each, to, uh, to send to the affected the victims of the, to send to the victims of the, uh, of the earthquake in, in Turkey. Yeah. So the charity side of things for Floki, I mean, there isn't much Floki utility there, obviously, but it's more of just providing help to people in need in the world and kind of the good karma and hoping that, you know, you get it kind of a pay it forward. And then maybe in the future, since, you know, Floki did create these schools that as people get educated on the crypto space and whatever, maybe they'll turn to Floki and Floki University and become uh, users and holders within the Floki ecosystem. Floki University would be the fourth and final component of the ecosystem and be interested to hear, you know, what your guys' plan is for Floki University. How is Floki token involved in that or, or how does Floki as a project benefit from that? And then, of course, the fifth part of the ecosystem that I really, really didn't mention is just Floki Toki token in the meme culture as a transactional currency. I know you guys have a merch store. I know you guys are integrating with uh, plugins and other stores that will accept Floki for the purchase of services and products. And of course, that's kind of the underlying technology of a lot of cryptocurrencies. Not really a differentiator, but Floki is out there and trying to capitalize on that built-in utility to a lot of cryptocurrencies. But yeah, go ahead and talk about the fourth and final uh, component of the Floki ecosystem, which would be uh, University of Floki. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, University of Floki started uh, early in the days, actually, without, without us even noticing it. But when the project was, I mean, when the V2 launched, we would all get on VCs and we would all vibe and talk to each other. And we started noticing people coming into the come into the, the, the voice chat to ask basic questions like, hey, I'm trying to buy the token. I don't know what to do. I, I just searched on Binance and, and on you know, OKX and uh, OB. And uh, of course, you can tell them I'm trying to make cover as many things as possible since I mentioned just one. So anyway, but they, they, they would mention the name of an exchange and say, hey, I can't find it on this exchange. And then we say, oh, well, this is not on that exchange yet. You have to use the decentralized exchanges. And then they say, oh, what is a decentralized exchange? And then you say, well, a good example of one is Uniswap. So you could go on Uniswap right now and buy. And then they say, so how do I buy on Uniswap? Like, what's Uniswap? I'm just hearing this for the first time. Can somebody teach me? So sometimes we'll ask them to come into the DMs and they would take them through it and they buy. Then the following day, somebody else comes comes as well and says, and just those, those basic questions like, you know, why, why am I paying gas fees? Like, what is uh, it's asking me for gas fees and it, it, it's rejecting my transactions? So these are basic things that that I mean you and I are, are now familiar with, but there are lots of people uh, in this space that that are just getting uh, familiar with these things that don't even know all, all of these all of these processes. So we then thought to ourselves that hey, if a lot of people are asking these questions, then perhaps we need to be we need to actually do something about it in a formal way to find a way to educate them about this space, to even let them know that there is a, there's a big world in this space beyond just beyond what they know about. So we thought, you know what? We are going to commit some resources and dedicate some time towards educating the newbies who are just getting to discover the space. As of, as of today, you know, we have less than 10% of the world who, uh, who hold or know about any form of cryptocurrency. We need to grow that number significantly, and we are not going to do that unless we have projects like ours or others in the industry as well 
commit a critical part of their resources towards educating the masses. And that's what University of Florida is about. Sounds familiar to like Binance Academy. You know, Binance Academy doesn't really have a utility exactly. for BNB, but you're educating current and new people coming into the space. And then you're hoping they realize the utility of uh, Floki and and you utilize Valhalla and you utilize, utilize Flokify Locker and and really just passes on all the value and and, and, and harnesses some holders as uh, new people come into the space. So it sounds like the second two arms that we talk about, the charity and the university are, are less about make charts go up. You know, that's what people in crypto space want and the, and the meme culture and more about giving back and helping people in the world to really uh, secure their own financial freedom and learning about cryptocurrencies and and getting going and and, and they can make their own decisions on on which tokens and which current cryptocurrencies they want to utilize uh, to uh, kind of provide that freedom financially for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're right. You're right. Awesome. So uh, Cobra, you guys seem to release major news all the time, and I know it can kind of get lost in the weeds. Or people aren't on Twitter every day; they're going to miss stuff. Do you just want to recap or highlight some of the most recent achievements or the, mo the most recent achievements that are most exciting to you or you think is most important to uh, Floki holders? Yeah, sure. I'd love to do that. Uh, I'd like to preface it with Floki.com, guys. Floki.com, um, if you haven't visited, it's uh, probably not like most websites that you've seen in Web3. And there's an update section and that update section stays up to date. Um, so you can kind of get all your news there. Also, our Twitter feed is very up to date. Um, and then we have a weekly recap uh, the, every Saturday on Twitter Spaces. It's insane to me because uh, I host that weekly recap usually and am able to go 60 to 90 minutes every single week um, <laughs> and usually run out of time. Can't cover all the stuff. So Floki is our goal is simple. We want to become the most known and used crypto brand on the planet. And that sounds crazy to a lot of people. But if you look at the moves that are being made and the ecosystem that's being built, we have people with business acumen, um, with experience, like our head of marketing, Saber, and like Jackie, our blockchain dev, and Mr. Brownwell, our, our lead game dev. So we're creating a world where you will be able to use all of our utilities um, kind of in unison. Imagine a place where you could... Um, see a commercial uh, on television in the United States or Turkey, which we've done, or see the Floki logo in the Kings League, which is some news that just came out. We are sponsoring Kings League football in uh, in Spain. Um, or if you're a cricket fan, the India Maharajas in India, which we recently did as well. So you see that Floki.com, you go there, you become a Valhalla player, um, you have access to then uh, here it's on the roadmap, the Floki debit card. So you've earned some Floki tokens. You can now use those to shop um, or you can lock up some of your goodies that you found in Valhalla and Floki Locker. I think you get the point. So as we do that, it's important to build the brand recognition um, and to talk about, you know, what we're doing. Uh, any, any major companies going to uh, market their brand in a way that uh, makes it familiar so that when people go on to places like crypto.com, which is another update. We just got listed on crypto.com uh, on the 20th. So three days ago, um, you know, we're, we're more available than we've ever been. Crypto.com is one of about 30 exchanges that have listed Floki in the last, uh, I'll call it in Q1. Let's call it Q1. We've had uh, somewhere around 30 listings that includes mm -hmm. Um, we've had OKX, we've had Crypto.com, we've had Wazirx in India, we've had CoinSpot, which is major in Australia, we've had Bitpanda in Europe, which is a big exchange there. That's just a handful of those who have listed us, and I'm sorry for the ones that I'm missing out on. Uh, again, you can go into the buy section on Floki.com and see those. Right. You know, two years ago, people were asking, how do we get Floki? And it was really limited. It was like PancakeSwap or Uniswap with Ethereum. And now there's so many centralized exchanges and big names. You know, Crypto.com has the naming rights to an NBA uh, stadium. So, I mean, this is, these are tier one exchanges. Now, of course, you guys can't talk about it. And the one everybody's waiting for is Coinbase and or Binance or Binance US. I did think it was very interesting that you guys did get on Wazer X in, in India because Binance does have ownership uh, in Wazer X, or at least they used to. Um, yeah. So I'm not going to say there's a tie there, but potentially, guys, I know uh, a lot of my U.S. buddies are always like, well, when's Floki going to go on Coinbase? Because like you said, there were no coiners. And I'm finally getting them to become coiners, but they're not quite to the hump of, of the DEXs. Uh, so it, it's nice that the centralized exchange list is expanding and maybe some of those uh, allow U.S. residents and I can get my buddies uh, on board with uh, Floki and 
hopefully getting into Valhalla. A lot of me and my buddies were World of Warcraft players, still League of Legends players, so still in the gaming ecosystem. So it's exciting that there's a game five to potentially outlet some of these no-coiners and jumpstart them into the Web3 industry. Exactly. That's that's what's so important. So, and this isn't a plug. I, I only hold Floki, um, Bitcoin, BNB, and Ethereum for the record. Um, and I don't have a preferred exchange. I do use Binance US. I do use Coinbase. Um, I now use crypto.com. I'm in the United States, as you can probably tell from mm -hmm. my accent. Uh, it took less than five minutes for me to download the crypto.com app to take a photo of my driver's license and to KYC. You know, you take a video of your face. And boom, man, you you are you, you click buy, you, you type in FL and the OKI uh, fills in for you and you are you're buying Floki, man, in less than 10 minutes. So that is so massive. Crypto.com is a U.S. regulated exchange, obviously, and they are known as one of the most regulated and compliant exchanges in the world. Um, this all kind of came to fruition. Uh, we launched a clean contract in January of 2022. So just over a year ago. Um, we cleaned up all that had happened in V1. Uh, it's a DAO now. Floki is a DAO, which is also a lot more attractive um, from a centralization standpoint. And yeah, I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding. Uh, you know, we're getting listed by some of the top exchanges in the world. Doesn't mean that, um, you know, we may or may not get listed anywhere else. So I'm not saying that. It's just that if you look at projects and you see what they're doing, um, and if, uh, if they kind of pass the smell test, you know, Floki certainly does for some of the biggest exchanges in the world. So we're excited to see what the future holds. Um, but to answer your question, you know, a little bit more directly, because I went kind of off the rails there, you know, about the the latest, the latest news. Um, there's a few big ones that I want to kind of reiterate. And that is the Kings League, um, which the Kings League uh, uh, reaches tens of millions of crypto savvy folks. Um, we have streamers like Kun Aguero, uh, Ibai, Gerard Peak, Juan Garnizo, um, those guys have 64.2 million followers, 56.8 million followers, 42 million followers, 41 million followers, just by, oh, the Greg FG, another 40 million followers. There are over 400 million people that see these games streamed live, and uh, Floki is right there next to McDonald's and Adidas uh, marketing there. We recently did the LLC Masters League uh, in cricket in uh, with the India Maharajas, which you guys might have seen, and that was incredible. There's over 700 million um, uh, cricket fans worldwide. Uh, Gautam Gambhir, who is a member of Indian Parliament, wore Floki big as heck on the front and the back of his jersey for these games. Um, so that's another massive outreach that we're doing here recently. Um, we also partnered with Dex Tools for a year. So go into Dex Tools, DexTools.io. Search any coin you want, and you're going to see Floki uh, on the top of your screen. In the trending bar, there's a button right there that says Floki. It's got the little dog with the with the horns on it. And if you click that, it's going to take you straight to a Floki chart. So they have about 140 million users annually that uh, that use Dex tools. I think we all know and love Dex tools and have used it at some point. Um, Floki is the top dog there. We've also got some banner ads running. And then lastly, this is really important because it's still live right now. We launched a campaign on BTOC. So Valhalla will be re released with a Chinese version. Uh, our website has been translated to Chinese. So we have, um, yeah, you can see that button there. The on, button. Uh, next, yep, Lucky there button it is. There. Scroll there. down to the bottom and you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, maybe a missed ship get floaky or something. We can change that ad, but oh, right here, right now. Yeah. Yep. And then if you go to the, the liquidity lock there, um, for whatever token you're looking at, go up, uh, you're looking, okay, see that little lock, click on that. And there okay. you can see, yeah, that should have Floki lock in there. I don't know why it's not showing. Floki right maybe. Okay, cool. It, it, Floki Fi does show up there for, it might be because you're on um, whatever token that is. Yeah, right. click on something else. They may have locked somewhere else, but uh, yeah. So Floki Fi locker uh, appears there as well. Um, so that's pretty, pretty, um, Pretty cool. I don't know why it's not showing there. I know it does on mine. So maybe and maybe uh, it's not because I'm not logged in here either. Oh yeah. You you so know that's probably in maybe. or maybe we need to check with them, but it, it does uh appear there as well as Floki Lock. Um if you go to the Dex Tools Twitter page, you can see that. Cool. But anyway, so um Valhalla. So China has 700 um million gamers 
700 million gamers, more than twice as much as there are in uh, in the United States total, people in the, in the U.S. total. And um, there are special requirements that you have to have to have a, a game um, in China that, that passes their their due diligence, so no blood in the game, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we are building a Chinese version of Valhalla. It will be out this year. And our website and our white paper have been translated to Chinese. And that coincides with a 90-day marketing campaign that we're doing on BTOC right now that reaches over 10 million uh, social media users, Chinese social media users. To give you an idea, we had a little under 100,000 um, members in our Chinese telegram about a month ago. And today we have over 130,000. So we've gained over 30,000 um, Chinese Vikings just in the last month. And we've got about 60 days left in that campaign. So um, yeah, it, whatever language you want to at the top there, you can see it's in Chinese, Arabic, uh, Spanish, Turkish. Um, we're, 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 we're in India, right? We're in Spain, right? We're in China, we're in all these places and uh, we're building a global brand and making that accessible to everybody in the world, man. Floki's the people's crypto. Right. This is, I mean, it's pretty crazy. And the reason I just wanted to screen share real quick is to kind of to show the marketing you're doing with X tools, show how, uh, you know, interactive that website is and how in-depth it is. And on the website, I saw the roadmap and that's kind of like the last question I had going on. Is there any public roadmap goals that are coming up or anything that really isn't publicly announced yet that maybe you, you wanted to announce or discuss on uh, this, this video? I'm not leaking anything, Lintern. Are you feeling leaky? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. B is the king of leaks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, gotta try, gotta try. Gotta tell the community I tried, you know? You know, this does say Floki 2023 roadmap, guys. We're already three months uh, down in the year. So I'm, I'm expecting a lot of these announcements. You just went over the next 10 things. They're all going to be rapidly coming out over the course of this year and all seem to have some really good utility for Floki and or some uh, fun things uh, to interact with for the Floki community. So really excited for that. Uh, I guess for me, DeFi lending and borrowing is really interesting. If people believe we're in a bull market and need some USDT or need some funds in the real world, they can uh, borrow against Floki, which you know we're all uh, speculating that uh, there's gonna be a lot of utility and a lot of demand for the token and, and that the token will stay pretty stable or go higher in price. That means you can you can borrow against that pay for your real world obligations. Hopefully Floki uh, continues to have some strength and then pay back that loan without ever having to really get out of your Floki position and don't have to stop supporting a project you really love. And then another one would be the Floki debit card. Obviously just integrating in, in the real world finance and be able to spend cryptocurrency on the go on, on, on life, food, drinks, lunch, whatever it may be, is always a, a, a huge benefit and a huge uh, utility add for any of these projects. And I'm sure knowing what Floki does, there'll be some kind of maybe fee built into that. And maybe there'll be a buyback and burn uh, structure built in there too. Obviously, this is just me speculating and hoping, but uh, you guys over at Floki always seem to try to drive utility for Floki and understand that a deflationary token e ecosystem and economy uh, is really important uh, for growth. And we've seen that with, with Bitcoin and the scarcity and kind of the, the, the scheduled inflationary mechanism uh, that it has and how successful Bitcoin has been. So a lot of people kind of model their economics after the king. Um, so I'm excited to see what you guys have coming and, uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be on this call with you before we go. Is there anything else that we kind of missed about Floki or anything that you want to talk about here, Cobra? No, man, we covered everything. I would just say that it's a lot. I, I understand that Floki mm -hmm. has a lot going on. Um, watch the space and just pay attention. Uh, we have almost 70 employees, 66, I think last I checked, um, who are working full-time to build all of what you guys have heard about today. And you mentioned at the very beginning of the call about lines. Um, and I love that because I often des describe Floki as having lines of business. And we do, we have lines of business. Valhalla is our gaming studio. And we have Jackie and Mr. Brownwell who are experts in that field and they're building one of the best games, uh, if not the, the most innovative, at least in, in the space ever. We have uh, B, who is our core strategist and who heads up Flokify and is building all this DeFi utility. Um, we have Lintern and um, he helps with the community and also with University of Floki, a lot of things. And then Saber, of course, runs our incredible marketing department, which is doing uh, marketing that quite frankly, nobody's seen in the space before. I can't really think of anyone who's marketed as effectively with the amount of spend that Floki has, uh, you know, 
just a couple, maybe Cryptocom and Binance have done more marketing, but we've been in F1 racing. We've been on eight global football clubs. We've been in cricket now. We've been on television in the United States and Turkey. This has been going on for two years. It's not just, uh, hey, we're going to put a billboard up in Times Square. Right. Or, hey, we're just going to, you know, put a billboard up in Vegas or whatever, you know, these, these gimmicky marketing uh, plans are. We're, we're on a mission here and we have people who know how to do it. And we have um, nothing but time and energy to pour into Floki because this is the true community project. We were the ones that actually um, had a rocky start and had actual community members step forward. No team tokens were ever given out. Everything that everybody's got in Floki was bought on the market, on the open market with their own money. And, uh, and we are here, uh, frankly, with a bit of a chip on our shoulder to, uh, to prove that meme plus utility is the best way to take crypto to the masses if only bitcoin had a dog on it your necklace <laughs> might look different and i think right. it'd be a lot further right <laughs> yeah that is awesome you know that's a good line there meme plus utility is, is really important so there you go guys a project i've talked about in the past but i wanted to finally get on some of the core team members and core community members to really talk about what floki's been doing this year just because it has been so much the People's Cryptocurrency and Utility Token of the growing, growing Floki ecosystem has a bright future, in my opinion. And I don't know about you guys, but this uh, call got me really excited. I'm going to have to stay tuned to the Twitter more. I'm going to have to keep that website up with my other million tabs here on my Google. Pin it up there so it's always up there so I can always stay up to date on the news. Uh, also, guys, don't forget there will be a 1 million Floki token giveaway. Simply like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment in the comment section below with your wallet address. Or if you want to enter a 2 million Floki Toki give, giveaway, join patreon.com slash learn crypto for daily updates on technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and news for both crypto and stocks. Upon joining, you will automatically be entered into that 2 million Floki giveaway. Thank you, Cobra, and thank you, uh, Lintern. I appreciate the time. And until next time, guys, stay tuned for your daily updates on crypto and stocks right here at Learn Crypto.